I'm, I'm Riaz Khan. I'm with the UNO Center at AIT, at the Asian Institute of Technology. Uh, I've done work both with the UNO Center and with BRAC. And uh, the UNO Center basically is promoting, we are a small offshoot of the main UNO Center in Dhaka. And our main mission is to educate people about uh, Professor Yunus's latest concept about social business and what social business in implies. Yeah, social business has been defined. There are two types of social business. Uh, the type one is what Professor Yunus calls a non-loss, non-dividend company mm -hmm. dedicated to a social cause. So the idea is that the company should uh, cover its costs when it's providing a service. Uh, and it has to be a social service of some type. Is it health for the poor? finance for the poor or whatever it is, it should be a, and it should cover its costs, but the profits are not taken by the owners of the company. Uh, the, all the profits go back into the company itself. Uh, type two social business is slightly different. It is a company that is for profit, but it's owned by the poor. So that's, it has no restrictions. The only restriction on the ownership. So, so those are the two types of companies. So the idea here with social business is the main emphasis is on the social value, you know. But it must be done in a sustainable manner. So if you run the company so it it's covers its costs, it will be financially sustainable. Mm -hmm. But then if your main focus is social, then obviously you will not be worrying about profit. You will be worrying about how to carry on the company and meeting your social goals. Mm -hmm. So that's the basic idea behind the social business. Mm -hmm. And microfinance in some sense is one of the earliest examples uh, under the Grameen model of a social business. And it's uh, the Grameen Bank is owned, 75% of the ownership is with the poor women who themselves make the membership of the bank. So, so it operates like a regular, in that sense, like a bank. It has profits, and, but the basic profits are being shared among the uh, group members who are poor. So that's the basic idea with microfinance. And microfinance has been very successful mm -hmm. in uh, worldwide. Uh, perhaps uh, some people have overdone the success in some spheres, and that has caused it problems. But overall, it's been a very sustainable way of providing uh, finance to the poor. Mm -hmm. I think now what is what is our challenge is to go beyond microfinance, to go into other social enterprises, other sectors, mm -hmm. and that's where the social business concept comes in. Uh, yes, I was with BRAC when I came back from the U.S. to Bangladesh. I joined BRAC, and I first worked with BRAC in, in fact, in its development program. Mm -hmm. I was uh, overseeing its sericulture, its silk program, and that gave me a lot of. Uh, thing in the field about how, how uh, things happen in the field, as opposed to theoretically. If you're sitting as an academic, it's, there's a lot of theory. But in the field, learning about how to actually implement programs was very important. And then when I was in charge of BRAC University, there were quite a few challenges. Uh, one of them was as simple as, you know, what, what is the legal structure? You know, what, is the, what right do you have to go about setting up a university? Questions of that nature. Then the second thing was that, how do we attract the kind of students that we want to attract. And it's not just students who are necessarily just good in, in studies, but those who come from a disadvantaged background. Mm -hmm. How do we draw them into a regular university? This was a big challenge for us. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, you know, what is the kind of language medium of instruction? What do the parents want? These are the kind of things that we have to deal with. So on one hand, I had to deal with this idea of getting permission for the university to work. And that's I spent a lot of effort behind that talking to other academics who were thinking, okay, what does a development organization have to do with the university? But, you know, you have to have, uh, each organization must decide what is good for the social structure of that society. And I think the university is a place where we can sort of build up a new collection of people, mm -hmm. of students who are, you know, in that sense, unspoiled. I mean, I think that once you've gone beyond into work and all that, you get certain ideas. But mm -hmm. at least in university, you are thinking about new ideas and if you can then expose them mm -hmm. to the social problems that societies face and are not fa face but are not solving you know those are, I think those are the issues that challenges that you can set to a student mm -hmm. and when the student is aware about that then it changes their entire worldview so when they come into the workforce when they come into government when they come into policy making they have a different perspective on that so that was some of the things we learned at Brack University. I'm, I'm, I'm right now, my next move is to actually go back into academia, for me personally, uh, to go back into academia and, and do, go back to what I was originally doing, mm -hmm. uh, which was in mathematics. But at the same time, what I'm interested in is, with my students, is to expose them mm -hmm. to the kind of 
uh, social issues that mm. I've dealt with in practice. practice. Mm. Uh, I'll give you an example that recently we were, I was, I was dealing with a uh, particular course and I, I asked the students, uh, and this was quite different from what they were expecting, the engineering students. They were. So they were expecting a kind of very standard engineering framework. But my question to them was the following, that you have floods in Thailand, for example. Mm -hmm. Now, if you have some kind of a thing that a flooding is taking place, how would you inform students in your locality? Now expect that what they will say is being engineering students, telecommunication students, they will then say, okay, you know, we'll use Twitter, we will use Facebook, we will use various email platforms to, to inform students. So my second question then is that, okay, this is happening on day four of, after you've set all this platform up, the transformer goes, the electricity goes. So the email stops working, the mobile phones and, and laptops stop working, how do you now inform the students about what's going on? So I want them to think very differently from a perspective where there's deprivation mm -hmm. rather than when they have everything at their disposal. So when things, and this is something that I would hope that as a society, as organizations, as a learning institution that we should promote among our students to think radically differently about what is happening. Look at a situation which you've solved a certain way, if you take away certain things, how do you still think about that situation? That's what I'm thinking about these days. Uh, I think that it's very good. I'm very heartened by the people, the young people I have met. I mean, it gives me tremendous hope uh, in this society and the world because I think they are much more, uh, I think, idealistic mm -hmm. than I was when I was that age. So I, I think this is terrific that, uh, that people are coming in Knowing that it's a terrific challenge, uh, knowing that there's tremendous challenges associated with it, knowing that their parents may not always appreciate what they're doing. I think that's a huge problem for some of them. Uh, and my advice to them is that, you know, keep at it. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a, be pragmatic. I mean, I'm not saying that give everything up just because you want to be a social entrepreneur. But keep at it. Uh, the, the, the challenges that you are facing today, uh, if you find a solution to that, you will make the world a better place. And there's nothing better than that. What more, what more if a legacy that you want to leave behind mm -hmm. is that you have done a little bit for your, uh, for your fellow uh, mm -hmm. people and all that, that's the best thing that you can do in life. Mm -hmm. So I think it's very important that you keep to your idealism, but also take care of yourself. I mean, I think that's, that's very important. I'm not saying that you, know, you should give, uh, sacrifice everything for your idealism. But it's very important that there are more people like you who are trying to solve the social problem of the world. Because there are many, and I think we need more idealistic people doing that. That is my advice. So.